My name is Kinsey McVeigh and today I'm here to share with you a printmaking project, a very simple project that you can do either at home or at school with your students that has always been a great success with my kids. They've always loved it and thought it was just the greatest thing. I teach anywhere from kindergarten through fifth grade and they all think it's a, good, a great thing. It's almost like magic to them when that project is finished and they open up that print and see how it looks. So if you're ready, I will tell you the few things we need and we can get started. Okay, so here's what you're going to need. You will need one piece of manila paper. It can be any size that you like. I'm doing a smaller piece here just for um, the sake of speed so I can get it done quicker to show you. You're going to need a piece of scrap paper that you'll put behind here that will help keep the crayon from getting off on your table or whatever surface you're working on. You will need a crayon, preferably a construction paper crayon because they're a little bit softer so they go on thicker the way we need them to. A piece of chalk doesn't really matter what color it is and a pencil and then what they're going to do is take their piece of manila paper and just fold it like they're making a little book or a card trying to get it even as possible of course but not a huge issue okay so now you're going to want to start using your scrap paper and your piece of manila paper on the front side only you're going to take your piece of chalk I use blue the color isn't that important I just wanted to make sure it was something that was easily seen here on the video and you're just going to use the side of your chalk and just completely cover the entire front of this piece of metal paper. That's the reason why we have scrap paper so this for the times that we go over the edge we have something to catch this chalk. Now this is one thing that I always emphasize in my own classroom some children are allergic to chalk. Chalk dust can get in the air, can irritate anybody's eyes or throat. So we always make sure we have a trash can nearby. So once our paper is mostly covered, doesn't have to be completely covered, you can still see some of the paper through there. You're going to take that scrap paper over to your trash can and just gently shake the loose chalk off into the trash. Okay, <clears throat> the next step, we're now done with our chalk. We now need our construction paper crayon and we're going to completely cover up the chalk and the paper. Still working on the same side. We haven't moved anything. And we're going to do this one line at a time. Now your, your students, they're going to want to, of course, color back and forth. They're going to want to scribble. But by lucky accident, we figured out a couple years ago with my own kids that when you do that, it tends to make the chalk or the crayon pop off and it starts to chip off of the paper. So if you go in one long line, it's less likely to do that. <clears throat> okay, I've just about got my paper covered up here. That actually is the hardest part for most kids because sometimes depending on the size of paper you're having them use, that can be a very tedious and time consuming process. Their hands are going to get tired, they're going to complain, but it'll be worth it in the end. Keep, them, keep their eyes on the goal. See what we come up with here. Okay, so we've got that mostly covered up. We're now done with our chalk, we're done with our scrap paper, we're done with our crayon. And now we're going to take our piece of paper. We're going to fold it back the opposite direction so that our colored side is now on the inside of our card. You need to make sure that the kids pay attention to where the folded side is because everything they draw on this is going to be duplicated from the center out. So, we're making it, so they want to make sure that whatever they draw, the center is going to start here on the folded edge. Now they can really draw anything that could be evenly split in half. What I usually have my kids work on is something like a face, or a flower, or a sun, or anything that can be split in half, a heart, start simple. If it's Christmas time, sometimes we do the Christmas trees. Um, just for quickness sake, I will do, I think, just a simple flower here. You're going to make sure that your kids are using their pencil, that they push nice and firmly on the paper. They're also going to want to go back over it and kind of scribble, pressing and making these lines nice and thick and dark. <clears throat> Being careful not to tear their paper if their pencil is too sharp because sometimes that can happen with this manila paper. It tears pretty easy. 
Okay, so that'll be the halfway to my center of my flower. Start making some simple petals here coming out from the center. And this can be a lot more complicated. I'm just trying to do a simple thing here. make it look like a sunflower or something okay so I've got my paper pretty much filled up with my pattern and I just need to go back and finish darkening all these lines making them nice and thick and dark and also I've added some pattern here in the middle started coloring in a few random petals there to add some more color and shapes to it and then from there we will have the big reveal to see how it looks I'll make sure I get back to work here. Okay, so I've gotten most of it colored, darkened most of all my lines, did the kind of alternating colors through there. So now it's time for the big reveal to see how it is. Now sometimes when I do this project, I don't even tell my kids what the end result's going to be. I don't show them an example necessarily every time because sometimes they'll ruin the surprise for them. So this is one of those times when if they haven't done it before, I'll just lead them through the process and not tell them exactly where we're going with it. So anyway, once you're finished with this part, then it's time to go ahead and open it back up and to see and hope that it all worked out correctly like we want to. Now if everything works right, we should end up with a duplicate image here of our picture. So yeah, everything turned out pretty good there. All of our dark lines I maybe could have picked you know a little bit brighter different colors here for those chalks so they show up a little better but over here it shows up really nice any place that it doesn't show up then you can just close it back up find a line maybe that's not quite dark enough and go back in and carefully color dark a little bit so it shows up a little better or color something in different change it a little bit everything will make it look better but of course you end up with something with symmetry you can talk about symmetry talk about balance talk about pattern all kinds of different things that this can work for. Um, one thing you do want to warn your kids of ahead of time though is that they can't erase. This whole process works because of the pressure that you're putting on this side of the paper. I mean, you could actually do this whole project just drawing with your fingernail or something because of the pressure you push through the paper, but then you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing, so that's why we use a pencil. But if one of your students messes up and they think they need to go back and erase something, the pressure they put with their eraser will copy through to the other side. So let's say the kid makes that little leaf or petal and they say, oh, that's not what I wanted, and they just go back and start pushing and scrubbing and erasing it away. Well, on the outside it looks fine, but this part that's the actual art project, nothing's changed. It's actually got a little worse. It's got a little smudgier because my eraser pushed the color through to that side of the paper. So you always want to encourage them just to think of an alternate solution for what they did or what they consider their mistake or a way to fix it, a way to change it, change their idea, be creative, see what they can come up with because erasing does not work. It's just going to make it worse or make a problem for it. Well, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully it was something fun and you learned something new. If not, maybe next time I'll get you with something that you haven't seen before. I'm always looking for new ideas and thoughts and comments from everyone out there, so if you would like to contact me, feel free to go to my website, which is www.tensymakebay.com, and there's all kinds of contact information there. Also on the main page, you can click on the Fun Stuff link and find other websites that have art lesson ideas, or there's also a link to online art games and fun things that your kids can do either for fun at home, or even you may be able to find uses for in your classroom. I have, and I really look forward to hearing from you.